Hi everybody, welcome back to another edition of Weg's Garage with the Old Guy. Today we're going to get back into our TR3 gearbox diagnosis. This week we're going to take a look at the counter shaft and check for end float on the gears themselves, so stay tuned. This is the actual counter shaft that comes out of our TR3 transmission with the gears themselves, a spacer that goes in here, which may become a factor later, and also the actual counter shaft shaft that fits inside this mechanism. Now we have a little bit of prep work to do to fit this back into the gearbox casing to check for end float. One of the things we have to do is that if I pull the shaft back just far enough, you'll see that there are a series of needles inside this bearing that we have to grease so they don't fall out. And when I originally took this apart, they fell out and I thought that was wrong. But after reading the TR3 gearbox manual, apparently these things fit in here loose. And what you're supposed to do is take grease, grease all these needle bearings up so they stay put, and that will allow us to put this whole mechanism back into the gearbox casing without those needles falling out. So I'm going to go ahead and grease up those needles inside the fore end and also in the aft end so they don't fall out and then we'll get into how to fit this into the gearbox casing. Okay, now that I've gotten grease inside of the needles themselves, hopefully those needles will stay put on either end of the shaft when I put this into the gearbox. The actual shaft that goes inside here is out, and I've examined the shaft itself, and it looks to be in fine shape. One little trick that a guy told me is just take your fingernail and rub it along the shaft and see that if you can feel any fine gouges or any grooves in the shaft itself. And I'm not feeling any. So I think our shaft is good. And just a visual inspection of the gears on the counter shaft does not show any abnormal wear or tear. Now before we put this in, what we actually have to do is place the gear mechanism inside the casing and then this is where it gets interesting. We have to slide the shaft inside of those gears. Now down on the casing on the floor, there's gonna be a little trick to this too, because the actual counter shaft goes way down here in this area. And the gears themselves are the same width as this. So what has to happen is we have to place the gears in and then take the shaft and slide it in through the rear end of the gear casing through this hole. Now one little trick to this is that on the transmission casing, there is a needle that retains that shaft. And that's what this guy is. And you see it's got a point in it. It does two things. One thing that it does is that it actually holds this shaft in place and the, this shaft I'm talking about, if I flip this back over, is actually the reverse gear and shaft down in this area. So once I get the gears in there and slide the shaft in, then the kick is the actual counter shaft goes through this hole. And if you watch really close, as I screw this in, you can see the point of that coming in, and that's going to wedge into a hole inside the counter shaft. 
And that hole in the counter shaft is actually this hole. So we're gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. One important thing though, before we begin, there are two thrust washers that go in the counter shaft, or around it I should say. There's a large one that goes in this area on the fore end of the gearbox. And there's also one on the aft end. Make sure those are in there. Um, to properly check the end float, we need those two in there before we put the counter shaft assembly in there. We're gonna give this a try. shaft is back in the gear case casing. A um, couple of points worth mentioning here that I found helpful. I don't know how much of me putting that back in you could see with my head and my arm being in the way, but basically yes, put grease on the thrust washer that goes on the fore end of the gearbox, get that into position and ready to go. Then take the counter shaft and slide it in there and the only way I was able to get this in is to leave the thrust washer out up here. Leave that out, and then once you get the counter shaft in, there's enough room where you can slide that in, and then you can slide the counter shaft shaft down through the whole works. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to try and wrestle this thing in with both thrust washers in place. And you can see the thrust washer, if you look real close, actually has a notch on it to where it should hook in to the casing itself right there on the end of my thumb. Up here, remember our needle here that holds the reverse gear shaft in place? It also holds the counter shaft gear in place. What you want to do is get this perfectly in line with that hole right there, and then screw the thing in. That's a bit of a trick, you kind of have to feel for it, but I'll get it. Okay, I'm gonna leave that in finger tight for now so I can measure the gear end float on my counter shaft. All right, now what all this is about. What is our gear end float? And if you stick your hand down here and wiggle this back and forth, there's a little bit of play, but not much. And the TR3 gear shop gear uh, box manual says there should be between six and ten thousandths of play. This piece here is actually called a distance piece. And if you don't have six to ten thousandths, the book says go ahead and file that until you get it. Well, you can feel a little bit of play on this shaft. And if I take a feeler gauge and squeeze it in there, as soon as I quit fumbling with my fingers here, yeah, I'm getting about eight thousandths of an inch of a gap of play on my gear end float. So I would call this assembly good. Well, that should do it for the counter shaft assembly here on Wegg's Garage. Thanks for watching again. Uh, one of the better pieces of news we've had in the last several weeks is the fact that just the last couple of days, both of our parts houses are now back in operation and taking orders. So we should be able to order some parts that we need and start putting this thing together and then do final specs on it. But so far, it's just some basically what I would call consumables is what we need in our gearbox. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching Wegg's Garage with the old guy. 
Parts houses are open, good news, get rid of COVID, hopefully they'll find a vaccine. And one of these days, who knows, maybe even the barber shop will open up again. We'll see you next time on Wegg's Garage with the Old Guy.